Hi guys, I'm here in the sweet corn field for Amazing Discoveries and I'm very excited because the corn is about to go into a phase that's very important. We're starting to see the pollen hang here, the blooming coming on and that is a very part, important part of the corn season here for us. So in the sweet corn we have a few different varieties this year and our goal is to grow the sweet corn to be mature before the first frost in the fall. Our season is very short, so for us to grow corn is a challenge and not every year turns out as good as another one maybe. But this year I did something very um, new. I found a variety that's almost 30 days shorter in the time that it takes to mature than most of the other sweet corn varieties. Now, shorter varieties usually yield a little bit less but if we can have sweet corn a month earlier, there's a high chance we can have it before the frost. So a few rows are a very early variety that takes about a month less than most of the other ones. Corn is a heavy feeder, so it wants to be well fed. But not only that, a lot of people grow corn in the garden and then they don't really get any corn out of it. Either the cobs are very small and only have a few kernels, or there's almost no kernels, or the corn just doesn't mature. So there's a few things that are very crucial and they apply to you growing corn regardless of where in the world you're growing it. First thing is corn is pollinated by wind and what that means is here as it flowers there's going to be little pollen flying out of here and the only way for this pollen to get to the next corn plant is by wind so it's not pollinated by bees or insects it's not pollinated by itself from one to another flower it actually has to go to another plant and so if you only have one or two corn plants the chances of the wind blowing the right direction at the right time are rather low so it is actually recommended to grow at least five or six rows of corn next to each other with enough space so they have space to grow, but still enough chance to get pollen blown across by the wind so that those plants can all get pollinated. Another important thing is that when you grow corn, in the beginning stage, it needs warm temperatures. So if you grow your corn and you plant it too early, corn might germinate and then get killed by cold weather or frost or by standing water in the field. So in that early stage, you have to be very careful and make sure you don't plant it too early. And then the third thing that I found is very important as the corn grows in the first couple of weeks of it maturing, you got to keep it weed free and feed it well so that when time comes to make cobs, the plant is strong, has lots of leaves and has lots of space around it to really grow up and feed those cobs so you get a good nice corn cob. So pollination is very important. If that is not sufficient, your corn cobs will only have a few kernels here and there. It won't be very evenly spread and it won't be filled. And so the key for that is grow a field, grow several rows square so the wind can blow any direction and it will still hit most of the corn with pollen to get pollinated. Another thing that's really important when you're growing corn is that when it gets hot and dry, you have to water it because if corn gets too dry, it'll just roll up the leaves and just kind of go into a standby modus. So if you can water it when it's hot, corn will just grow beautifully. Um, one thing that I want to mention too is if you're trying to grow corn and want to store it or harvest it to have dry corn, you want to find varieties that are meant for that. Sweet corn. It will still dry up, but it's not ideal. It's bred specifically to be very sweet and to be good when you use it fresh. So if you want to store corn, dry it and use it to make meals out of it, like cornmeal or just have corn on hand that has solid kernels to make flour or whatever, 
you want to find varieties that are specific for that. Now, they will usually take a bit longer because they have longer maturity times. But if you grow both, you can still get everything that you need for your family, some fresh cobs, and you can even freeze them. Or you just have your dry corn to make your cornmeal and cornbread and other things that you like to make out of corn.